name is Linda Ellerby, and she's in New York. His name is Lloyd Dobbins, and he was in Taiwan. And here are some of the stories we'll show you tonight. Busted flat. Meet a man who spent $18,000 of his own money to become a rich and famous songwriter. He's failed so far, but he's had help at it. When we mean we got a real bargain, we say, I got it for a song. We don't really mean that songs are cheap. There are people who make lots of money writing songs and more people who would like to. Ever read one of those ads in the back of the magazine that begins, you may be a songwriter, send us $5 and your poem? You can spend a lot more than $5 before you're through. Songwriting is a bingo game. Anyone can play and almost everyone can lose. Well, through a friend of a friend, I got the name of someone, and he took $2,000 of mine and went into a rather dinky eight-track studio and came out with a, a dinky kind of tape with two songs on it. And that was my introduction to the song business. And we went up to Los Angeles, uh, to Hollywood, with this master, and uh, uh, they listened to it, and they said, oh, this will sell. And you know, it's funny because way down deep at the time, a uh, woman's intuition, I guess, it seemed like it was almost too easy, you know? But we did hand them, we'd saved it, we handed them the $1,500. Well, you one more guitar in the line, the man said. Just one more guitar in the line. I was one more guitar in that long, lonely line. But the Everybody is the only one singing that song. And if you put out a call for a song, more people will show up than if you put out a call for an actor. After all, it takes work to be an actor, but anyone can write a song. To your basic guitar. Yeah. Who are the rest of you? I drove 150 miles. Yeah, there was somebody earlier that drove 1,400 miles. He beat you out. 1,600 miles? 1,400. Last year, Americans spent three and one half billion dollars on records. With stakes that high, it's a better come on than bingo. Since no one knows what will be a hit, why not my song? There are a million and a half songs in this room. A million and a half. And there are 20 million people who think their songs ought to be in this room. It might be a musician who's been struggling for years or someone who listened to the radio and said, I can do that. They're both songwriters trying to make it. And maybe they will. That's what's so enticing about songwriting and so frustrating. There are so many wrong ways to go about getting your song into this room. And there is no right way. Sing it out, girl. Sing it out, girl. Sing it till your face is turning blue. Break your bones and leave your... She is a songwriter and a teacher of songwriters. She works for songwriters, resources, and services. She runs a workshop for would-be songwriters. And she doesn't lie to them. The truth is, teaching songwriting pays better than songwriting. What we try to do is have you leave your ego out the door, okay, so that you just bring in your music and we deal with the song. You're a shadow of a stranger in my mind. I thought I knew you well for some time. Songwriters, Resources and Services doesn't tell people it can get their songs recorded or published. It doesn't even try. It tells people what is good about their songs and what is bad. Of course, with songs, that's only an opinion. The organization also tries to protect the songwriter, to protect the words and music from being stolen and the person from being taken. But when you hear good things about yourself, it's easy to be taken. You guys have such a recordable sound. You just, you set, your voices blend so nice. Really, you have just such a fine sound. Just, 
It's great. I can't wait to see you record it. You have some contracts here from a company by the name of Oste Music. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. Oste Music wanted $985 from this man. The company didn't promise anything. So the lawyer advised the writer to do the same. Yeah, I would think that it would be best that perhaps you take your material to a company that were to offer you um, contracts without any money coming from you. Uh, this is what is standardized in the industry. Penny Jackson wrote four songs for free. She thought they were so good they were worth paying someone to publish them. She did. She paid $395 to a man named Dale Olinger. He had a fancy brochure and an attitude that seemed, to her, professional. He said he was a producer. He had an ad in the Yellow Pages. Well, uh, I went in and played my song for him. And, of course, he was just overwhelmed, thought it was the best thing he'd ever heard. And uh, told me that he would uh, take my musical arrangement and put, a, put it down on a lead sheet, uh, record it to my satisfaction, and then present it to several recording companies. Uh, what actually happened was that he, he did make a lead sheet that was totally inaccurate. Uh, the recording was, in my opinion, unpresentable. And when I told him that I was dissatisfied with the recording, his reply was that I could spend more money and get a better quality recording, which I just dropped it at that because I kind of realized I had been taken. Olinger produces from his house in Long Beach, California. He used to produce from this music store. He still mentions it heavily in his ads, but the new owner is quick to tell you Dale Olinger has nothing to do with this store anymore. Olinger was quick to tell us he was a producer until he saw the canceled checks we had from Penny Jackson. Then he refused to say anything except that we were sensationalists who intended to make him look bad and had no appointment. So we asked for an appointment. He closed for the day. Later, he must have had a change of heart. Dale Olinger sent Penny Jackson a check for the money she had paid him, all $395. is a legitimate recording studio. The money at stake here belongs to record companies. They take the risk, not the songwriter. The people who work in the studio know you don't pay someone to produce your song. Yeah, I would go as far as to say that it's fraud. Absolutely. And I think it's unethical from a professional standpoint. Uh, what it is from a moral standpoint, I won't even touch that because they, these people have to deal with that and they have to live with it. But in my viewpoint, the music industry is hard enough as it is to keep everything straight ahead and, and to, for, for anybody with talent to, to try to make it. And then to have this kind of activity added to it uh, makes it even worse. It makes it even uglier. Uh, in your name only. Recently, Herschel Elkins, Assistant Attorney General of California, investigated this song shark business. He wrote a song and sent it to eight companies, a bad song. And I finally had it perfected. I now had finally found the bad song. I mean, that nothing could be done with. I mean, I, I've, I've heard some songs and listened to the words separately, and I, uh, you know, I realize that often you can't tell what's going to be a hit. But this one couldn't be anyway. And uh, I sent it in with a sort of a scrawl. I wrote it left-handed so that, you know, I'm right-handed, but so it would look like it was simply a scrawl sent in by somebody who, uh, who really wasn't too familiar with the language. Uh, and, um, uh, and asked for their, uh, you know, uh, said, gee, I hope this will really be a big hit because I need the money. And, uh, and then I got uh, the answers back in, with these beautiful contracts from seven of the eight companies. Only one of those companies, George Liberace Music, agreed to talk to us. This company, for a fee, will put your song to music, record it their way, and send you a lead sheet and a record. George Liberace doesn't work there. The owner bought the company, with Liberace's name, after he left his job as an electronic parts manufacturer. What you do is not illegal. 
But there are many people who think that it is immoral because you are trading on people's dreams, promising things that they shouldn't expect. Well, Linda, I can't argue with that. Uh, people are people. Um, I, I can't, uh, all I know is the way our company operates. We try not to be misleading. We tell our uh, songwriters that uh, the odds are better in Las Vegas, that uh, the chances of uh, having a hit song are very remote, that uh, if they can't afford uh, to have their song recorded, why well, don't do it. Um, naturally, we are in business. And as I said before, we want to make money. So if we simply told everybody that came along uh, to go away, why well, we'd blow away too. But they shouldn't count on their song being no a way, hit. No way, no way. And they shouldn't count on it being played on the radio stations. No, they really should. And they shouldn't count on there being a big sale of the records. No, no. I can't help it people are foolish, Linda. And, you know, if you have a dream that uh, I can't help what you dream about. What they dream about is having their songs recorded by one of the people on these billboards. The people on these billboards, more often than not, write their own songs. But that never gets in the way of a dream. It's like panning for gold. It seems so easy. You write a hit song, you get to live in Beverly Hills. You get to live in a big fancy house. You get a car for every member of the family. You get to name the car. The other car is named Words Too. You get all those things. And of course, this. This is what you get if it works. This is what Alan and Marilyn Bergman have. What are you doing the rest of your life? North and south and east and west of your never answered a $75 come on. They never had to. Well, you both are professional songwriters, and you must know a lot of professional songwriters. Do you know any songwriters who made it that way? No. 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 So what do these people get for their $75? $75 poor. I just think it's heartbreaking that, uh, uh, you know, the people who, who want to write songs and may even be gifted, you know? There may even be some talented people are, uh, are being led astray like that. They'd be far better off, it seems to me, just sending them to the artists whom they feel would be the best artists to record the song or find out who, who the man or woman is who produces this artist and getting the material to them. I would imagine that a responsible record producer will look at most material that comes across his desk because who knows where the next hit song is coming from today. Looking into my heart, I knew it from the first time. Nobody knows. That's the catch. Nobody knows. Not even the son of Norman Luboff or his wife. Both are songwriters and both are, for all their connections, unable to connect. I mean, I have been at times when I've had every, anything but everything but three syllables in a song. I sit there and just cry because I feel like I cannot get those three syllables. Then to get a song that you feel is so there and to, and to go into a person with it and to lay your soul out on the table and to have them say, are you kidding? Or... After, after eight bars, next. So they keep trying. This man spent $18,000 trying. They all keep trying. And when nothing else works, they write songs about that. Busted flat, not a nickel to my name. I'm here in L.A. trying to play the game. 
It's been two years, haven't sold a single song. I'm going home where I belong. I'm never going to write another song. It hurts too much to try to tell the truth. And then somebody listens in a big glass tower. He says it's nice. But he ain't got no use for it. Well, I'm one more guitar in this long, lonely line. But I'm the only one singing this song. Yeah, I'm the only one singing this song. By the way, Assistant Attorney General Elkin's purposely bad song was lost. That's just as well. If we had found it, we would have played it, and it's terrible. <laughs>